Neuroblastoma, Wikipedia article audio. Neuroblastoma is a type of cancer that forms in certain types of nerve tissue. It most frequently starts from one of the adrenal glands, but can also develop in the neck, chest, abdomen, or spine. Symptoms may include bone pain, a lump in the abdomen, neck, or chest, or a painless bluish lump under the skin. Signs and Symptoms Cause Diagnosis Biochemistry Imaging Histology Staging Screening Treatment Prognosis Cytogenetic profiles Epidemiology History Society and culture Legislative efforts Research Preclinical models Treatments Refractory and relapsed neuroblastoma Occasionally, neuroblastoma may be due to a mutation inherited from a person's parents. Environmental factors have not been found to be involved. Diagnosis is based on a tissue biopsy. Occasionally it may be found in a baby by ultrasound during pregnancy. At diagnosis, the cancer has usually already spread. The cancer is divided into low, intermediate, and high-risk groups based on a child's age, cancer stage, and what the cancer looks like. Treatment and outcomes depends on the risk group a person is in. Treatments may include observation, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or stem cell transplantation. Low-risk disease in babies typically has a good outcome with surgery or simply observation. In high-risk disease, chances of long-term survival, however, are less than 40% despite aggressive treatment. Neuroblastoma is the most common cancer in babies and the third most common cancer in children after leukemia and brain cancer. About one in every 7,000 children is affected at some time. About 90% of cases occur in children less than 5 years old and it is rare in adults. Of cancer deaths in children, about 15% are due to neuroblastoma. The disease was first described in the 1800s. The first symptoms of neuroblastoma are often vague, making diagnosis difficult. Fatigue, loss of appetite, fever, and joint pain are common. Symptoms depend on primary tumor locations and metastases if present. Neuroblastoma often spreads to other parts of the body before any symptoms are apparent and 50 to 60 percent of all neuroblastoma cases present with metastases. The most common location for neuroblastoma to originate is in the adrenal glands. This occurs in 40 percent of localized tumors and in 60 percent of cases of widespread disease. Neuroblastoma can also develop anywhere along the sympathetic nervous system chain from the neck to the pelvis. Frequencies in different locations include, neck, chest, abdomen, or pelvis. In rare cases, no primary tumor can be discerned. Rare but characteristic presentations include transverse myelopathy, treatment-resistant diarrhea, Horner's syndrome, opsoclonus myoclonus syndrome and ataxia, and hypertension. The cause of neuroblastoma is not well understood. The great majority of cases are sporadic and non-familial. About 1-2% of cases run in families and have been linked to specific gene mutations. Familial neuroblastoma in some cases is caused by rare germline mutations in the anaplastic lymphoma kinase gene. 
germline mutations in the PHOX2A or KIF1B gene have been implicated in familial neuroblastoma, as well. Neuroblastoma is also a feature of neurofibromatosis type 1 and the Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. MYCN oncogene amplification within the tumor is a common finding in neuroblastoma. The degree of amplification shows a bimodal distribution, either 3 to 10 fold, or 100 to 300 fold. The presence of this mutation is highly correlated to advanced stages of disease. Duplicated segments of the LMO1 gene within neuroblastoma tumor cells have been shown to increase the risk of developing an aggressive form of the cancer. Neuroblastoma has been linked to copy number variation within the NBPF10 gene, which results in the 1Q21.1 deletion syndrome or 1Q21.1 duplication syndrome. Several risk factors have been proposed and are the subject of ongoing research. Due to characteristic early onset, many studies have focused on parental factors around conception and during gestation. Factors investigated have included occupation, smoking, alcohol consumption, use of medicinal drugs during pregnancy, and birth factors, however results have been inconclusive. Other studies have examined possible links with atopy and exposure to infection early in life, use of hormones and fertility drugs, and maternal use of hair dye. The diagnosis is usually confirmed by a surgical pathologist, taking into account the clinical presentation, microscopic findings, and other laboratory tests. It may arise from any neural crest element of the sympathetic nervous system. Esthesia neuroblastoma, also known as olfactory neuroblastoma, is believed to arise from the olfactory epithelium and its classification remains controversial. However, since it is not a sympathetic nervous system malignancy, Esthesia neuroblastoma is a distinct clinical entity and is not to be confused with neuroblastoma. In about 90% of cases of neuroblastoma, elevated levels of catecholamines or their metabolites are found in the urine or blood. Catecholamines and their metabolites include dopamine, homovanillic acid, and slash or vanillyl mandelic acid. Another way to detect neuroblastoma is the meta-iodobenzyl geoanidine scan, which is taken up by 90-95% to of all neuroblastomas, often termed Mibijavid. The mechanism is that MIBG is taken up by sympathetic neurons, and is a functioning analog of the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. When it is radioionated with I131 or I123, it is a very good radiopharmaceutical for diagnosis and monitoring of response to treatment for this disease. With a half-life of 13 hours, I-123 is the preferred isotope for imaging sensitivity and quality. I-131 has a half-life of 8 days and at higher doses is an effective therapy as targeted radiation against relapsed and refractory neuroblastoma. On microscopy, the tumor cells are typically described as small, round, and blue, and rosette patterns may be seen. Homer Wright rosettes are tumor cells around the neuropil, not to be confused with pseudorosettes, which are tumor cells around a blood vessel. They are also distinct from the pseudorosettes of an ependymoma which consist of tumor cells with glial fibrillary acidic protein positive processes tapering off toward a blood vessel. A variety of immunohistochemical stains are used by pathologists to distinguish neuroblastomas from histological mimics, such as rhabdomyosarcoma, Ewing's sarcoma, lymphoma, and Wilms tumor. 
Neuroblastoma is one of the peripheral neuroblastic tumors that have similar origins and show a wide pattern of differentiation ranging from benign ganglioneuroma to stroma-rich ganglioneuroblastoma with neuroblastic cells intermixed or in nodules, to highly malignant neuroblastoma. This distinction in the pretreatment tumor pathology is an important prognostic factor, along with age and mitosis. Karyorexis index. This pathology classification system describes favorable and unfavorable tumors by the International Neuroblastoma Pathology Committee, which was established in 1999 and revised in 2003. The International Neuroblastoma Staging System, established in 1986 and revised in 1988, stratifies neuroblastoma according to its anatomical presence at diagnosis. Although international agreement on staging has been used, the need for an international consensus on risk assignment has also been recognized in order to compare similar cohorts and results of studies. Beginning in 2005, representatives of the major pediatric oncology cooperative groups have met to review data for 8,800 neuroblastoma patients treated in Europe, Japan, USA, Canada, and Australia between 1990 and 2002. This task force has proposed the International Neuroblastoma Risk Group Classification System. Retrospective studies revealed the high survival rate of 12-18 month old age group, previously categorized as high risk, and prompted the decision to reclassify 12-18 month old children without NMIC amplification to intermediate risk category. The new INRG risk assignment will classify neuroblastoma at diagnosis based on a new international neuroblastoma risk group staging system. The new risk stratification will be based on the new in staging system, age, tumor grade, NMIC amplification, unbalanced 1-1-Q aberration, and ploidy into four pretreatment risk groups, very low, low, intermediate, and high risk. Urine catecholamine level can be elevated in preclinical neuroblastoma. Screening asymptomatic infants at 3 weeks, 6 months, and 1 year has been performed in Japan, Canada, Austria and Germany since the 1980s. Japan began screening 6-month-olds for neuroblastoma via analysis of the levels of homovanillic acid and vanilmandelic acid in 1984. Screening was halted in 2004 after studies in Canada and Germany showed no reduction in deaths due to neuroblastoma, but rather caused an increase in diagnoses that would have disappeared without treatment, subjecting those infants to unnecessary surgery and chemotherapy. When the lesion is localized, it is generally curable. However, Long-term survival for children with advanced disease older than 18 months of age is poor despite aggressive multimodal therapy with anti-GD2 monoclonal antibody therapy. Biologic and genetic characteristics have been identified, which, when added to classic clinical staging, has allowed patient assignment to risk groups for planning treatment intensity. These criteria include the age of the patient, extent of disease spread, microscopic appearance, and genetic features including DNA ploidy and NMIC oncogene amplification, into low, intermediate, and high-risk disease. A recent biology study analyzed 2,687 neuroblastoma patients and the spectrum of risk assignment was determined. 37% of neuroblastoma cases are low risk, 18% are intermediate risk, and 45% are high risk. The therapies for these different risk categories are very different. With current treatments, patients with low and intermediate risk disease have an excellent prognosis with cure rates above 90% for low risk and 70-90% for intermediate risk. In contrast, 
therapy for high-risk neuroblastoma the past two decades resulted in cures only about 30% of the time. The addition of antibody therapy has raised survival rates for high-risk disease significantly. In March 2009 an early analysis of a children's oncology group study with 226 high-risk patients showed that two years after stem cell transplant 66% of the group randomized to receive CH14.18 antibody with GMCSF and IL-2 were alive and disease-free compared to only 46% in the group that did not receive the antibody. The randomization was stopped so all patients enrolling on the trial will receive the antibody therapy. Chemotherapy agents used in combination have been found to be effective against neuroblastoma. Agents commonly used in induction and for stem cell transplant conditioning are platinum compounds, alkylating agents, topoisomerase 2 inhibitor, anthracycline antibiotics, and vinca alkaloids. Some newer regimens include topoisomerase I inhibitors in induction which have been found to be effective against recurrent disease. In the abdomen, a tumor may cause a swollen belly and constipation, a tumor in the chest may cause breathing problems. A tumor pressing on the spinal cord may cause weakness, thus an inability to stand, crawl, or walk. Bone lesions in the legs and hips may cause pain and limping. A tumor in the bones around the eyes or orbits may cause distinct bruising and swelling. Infiltration of the bone marrow may cause pallor from anemia. Stage 1, localized tumor confined to the area of origin. Stage 2A unilateral tumor with incomplete gross resection, identifiable ipsilateral and contralateral lymph node negative for tumor, stage 2b, unilateral tumor with complete or incomplete gross resection, with ipsilateral lymph node positive for tumor, identifiable contralateral lymph node negative for tumor, stage 3, Tumor infiltrating across midline with or without regional lymph node involvement, or unilateral tumor with contralateral lymph node involvement, or midline tumor with bilateral lymph node involvement, stage 4, dissemination of tumor to distant lymph nodes, bone marrow, bone, liver, or other organs except as defined by stage 4S, stage 4s. Age 1 year old with localized primary tumor as defined in stage 1 or 2, with dissemination limited to liver, skin, or bone marrow. Stage L1, localized disease without image defined risk factors. Stage L2, localized disease with image defined risk factors. Stage M, metastatic disease. Stage MS, metastatic disease special where MS is equivalent to stage 4s. Low-risk disease can frequently be observed without any treatment at all or cured with surgery alone. Intermediate risk disease is treated with surgery and chemotherapy. High-risk neuroblastoma is treated with intensive chemotherapy, surgery, radiation therapy, bone marrow slash hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, biological-based therapy with 13 cis retinoic acid and antibody therapy usually administered with the cytokines GMCSF and IL-2. Tumors presenting exclusively with whole chromosome copy number changes were associated with excellent survival. Tumors presenting with any kind of segmental chromosome copy number changes were associated with a high risk of relapse. Within tumors showing segmental alterations, additional independent predictors of decreased overall survival were NMIC amplification, 1P and 11Q deletions, and 1Q gain. Subtype 1 Favorable neuroblastoma with near triploidy and a predominance of numerical gains and losses, mostly representing non-metastatic NB stages 1, 2, and 4S, subtypes 2A and 2B, found in unfavorable widespread neuroblastoma, stages 3 and 4, 
with 11Q loss and 17Q gain without NMIC amplification or with NMIC amplification often together with 1P deletions and 17Q gain. Between 20% and 50% of high-risk cases do not respond adequately to induction high-dose chemotherapy and are progressive or refractory. Relapse after completion of frontline therapy is also common. Further treatment is available in Phase I and Phase II clinical trials that test new agents and combinations of agents against neuroblastoma, but the outcome remains very poor for relapsed high-risk disease. Most long-term survivors alive today had low or intermediate risk disease and milder courses of treatment compared to high-risk disease. The majority of survivors have long-term effects from the treatment. Survivors of intermediate and high-risk treatment often experience hearing loss, growth reduction, thyroid function disorders, learning difficulties, and greater risk of secondary cancers affect survivors of high-risk disease. An estimated two of three survivors of childhood cancer will ultimately develop at least one chronic and sometimes life-threatening health problem within 20 to 30 years after the cancer diagnosis. Based on a series of 493 neuroblastoma samples, it has been reported that overall genomic pattern, as tested by array-based karyotyping, is a predictor of outcome in neuroblastoma. Earlier publications categorized neuroblastomas into three major subtypes based on cytogenetic profiles. Virtual karyotyping can be performed on fresh or paraffin embedded tumors to assess copy number at these loci. SNP array virtual karyotyping is preferred for tumor samples, including neuroblastomas, because they can detect copy neutral loss of heterozygosity. Copy neutral low can be biologically equivalent to a deletion and has been detected at key loci in neuroblastoma. Array CGH, FISH, or conventional cytogenetics cannot detect copy neutral low. Neuroblastoma comprises 6-10% of all childhood cancers, and 15% of cancer deaths in children. The annual mortality rate is 10 per million children in the 0 to 4 year old age group, and 4 per million in the 4 to 9 year old age group. The highest incidence is in the first year of life, and some cases are congenital. The age range is broad, including older children and adults, but only 10% of cases occur in people older than 5 years of age. A large European study reported less than 2% of over 4,000 neuroblastoma cases were over 18 years old. In 1864 German physician Rudolf Fierko was the first to describe an abdominal tumor in a child as a glioma. The characteristics of tumors from the sympathetic nervous system and the adrenal medulla were then noted in 1891 by German pathologist Felix Marchand. In 1901 the distinctive presentation of stage 4s in infants was described by William Pepper. In 1910 James Homer Wright understood the tumor to originate from primitive neural cells, and named it neuroblastoma. He also noted the circular clumps of cells in bone marrow samples which are now termed Homer Wright rosettes. Of note, Homer Wright with a hyphen is grammatically incorrect, as the eponym refers to just Dr. Wright. U.S. Representative Chet Edwards of Waco, Texas, successfully introduced legislation to earmark $150 million toward a cure for neuroblastoma and other cancers. The measure was signed into law in July 2008 by U.S. President George W. Bush. Edwards was inspired in the endeavor by the illness and subsequent death of Aaron Channing Boonger of Bryan, daughter of one of his constituents, Walter L. Boonger head of the History Department at Texas A&M University.
Neuroblastoma patient derived tumor xenografts have been created by orthotopic implantation of patient tumor samples into immunodeficient mice. PDX models have several advantages over conventional cancer cell lines s. Neuroblastoma PDXs retain the genetic hallmarks of their corresponding patient tumors and PDXs display infiltrative growth and metastasis to distant organs. PDX models are more predictive of clinical outcome as compared to conventional cancer cell line xenografts. Neuroblastoma PDXs might thus serve as clinically relevant models to identify effective compounds against neuroblastoma. Recent focus has been to reduce therapy for low and intermediate risk neuroblastoma while maintaining survival rates at 90%. A study of 467 intermediate risk patients enrolled in A3961 from 1997 to 2005 confirmed the hypothesis that therapy could be successfully reduced for this risk group. Those with favorable characteristics received four cycles of chemotherapy, and those with unfavorable characteristics received eight cycles with three-year event-free survival and overall survival stable at 90% for the entire cohort. Future plans are to intensify treatment for those patients with aberration of 1p36 or 11q23 chromosomes as well as for those who lack early response to treatment. By contrast, Focus the past 20 years or more has been to intensify treatment for high-risk neuroblastoma. Chemotherapy induction variations, timing of surgery, stem cell transplant regimens, various delivery schemes for radiation, and use of monoclonal antibodies and retinoids to treat minimal residual disease continue to be examined. Recent Phase 3 clinical trials with randomization have been carried out to answer these questions to improve survival of high-risk disease. Chemotherapy with topodecan and cyclophosphamide is frequently used in refractory setting and after relapse.